How Power Rangers, Rangers playback. Play <laughs> I said that. We can't. I got confused for a second. I know. Me too. <laughs> Hi guys. Hi. Oh, we're so excited today. Um, we have our baby blue brother yes. with us. And you can see him on screen. He's not really a baby anymore. He's actually <laughs> taller than us, but to us, he will always be our, our younger brother. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. And hi. hi Welcome. You Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yes, we're so happy to have you. And I'm sure our fans have a lot of questions about the Power Ranger battle that is about to happen on the 17th of September. Yes. Whoop, whoop, whoop. The is it the 17th or, the or 18th? <laughs> 18th. 18th. I'm sorry, 18th of September. I'm a day behind. So, yes. So, yeah, Blakey, over. tell us a little bit about um, what to expect or how you and Mikey came to this point that you guys were going to do an MMA fight like where did that come from yeah um I mean originally it started a couple years ago we've been talking about it for quite some time um and we just wanted to give the fans something other than meeting greeting them at a comic-con originally um originally the story behind it for me was he had posted something online saying you know and this is when he had started first his comic cons and getting out there as the last red ranger uh -huh. <laughs> um, he had posted something about his mma stuff and you know i had saw it about him saying hey who do you think would win in a fight between me and jdf and i kind of maybe took it the wrong way back then and said oh dude you can't be calling out my teammate like that long story short i said hey why don't you pick on someone your own age and that's how it started back then so then we started working, we sweat, we, we're good friends. We went and we had lunch, we sat down and had sushi. We talked about it. We were like, how can we make pay-per-view about it? How can we make money with this? And um, yeah, long story short, we were supposed to be scheduled to fight in July out in Las Vegas through another company called Tough Enough. And they weren't gonna provide us a pay-per-view. And honestly, with the fan base and our fan following and our platforms, we were like, eh, it might not work the best for us to do that. People can't obviously all go to Vegas. So let's figure out a way to uh, get a pay-per-view attached to it. So he did all that on his end. He's in Utah. He knows the guys where we're currently doing the fight with Steel Fist. And yeah, we set it up. He told me, hey, look, it took quite some time. We were supposed to be scheduled for July. And thank God we weren't because I probably wouldn't have made weight. I wasn't taking it as seriously. Yeah. Once we found out that we had it scheduled for September 18th is when, you know, I mean, I was training before, but now I'm really focused on training and I'm dialed in. I'm training five days a week for it. Um, so yeah, I'm excited. We're 17 days away from the fight. Um, it's time for everybody to see all the hard work and dedication and stuff that we're both putting in. And I hope everybody enjoys it. And I hope that it's a good night. And uh, I, I, I'm just going to do what I do best. And I'm going to go in there and I'm going to win. I love it. I have, I have to say, I was talking to Nakia about this the other day. I absolutely love your stories. I what I mean, I follow you pretty religiously on uh, watching you training and your and your eating and just how focused and I'm so proud of you. I know I've said that to you privately, but so proud of the work and the, the transformation that you've yeah. made like I mean, you were always beautiful to us, but <laughs> but you have just put so much dedication and it just really shows. And we're, yeah. we're both very proud of Honestly, you. Honestly, I appreciate that a lot coming from you guys because you guys know, even back then doing the Comic-Con and stuff, I wasn't in the best shape. I was a little overweight. I was drinking. I was younger. I didn't have the right mindset. And when I started taking this seriously and I really dialed in on my training, I told myself, um, Honestly, not only is it a big night for everybody to watch, but it's also putting me in the best shape of my entire life. I'm currently yeah. sitting at 10% body fat, 210 pounds. I don't think I've ever been in a large t-shirt. My waist went wow. from a 38 to a 34. Um, I'm five pounds away from my weight cut and it's going to be an easy weight cut at this point. It's just me now continuously trying to stay focused and eat. That's the hard part is I'm working so much in the dojo and in the training gym and in the MMA gym and doing jujitsu and everything like that. I don't have time to eat. So I find myself not only packing my gym bag, but packing a backpack for food. Right. So I have to force myself to eat at times because I'm so busy training. But I, I will say that I enjoy the process more than I thought I was going to enjoy the process. And um, it won't be my only fight. I'm going to take a couple other fights. And now it is my pro debut. 
uh, me and Mike both decided to go pro for this one. And I think that was under the stipulations that we had to do in order to get the pay-per-view also. So we're both going pro. So I won't be fighting any amateurs after Mike. It'll be another pro. So we'll see where wow. it takes me. But I'm excited. Gosh, wow. I was telling you. Well, first of all, I wanted, some of you don't know who Alexis is. Alexis, raise your hand. Because they're like, who is this gentleman in the corner? Him. Oh, I thought they could. Just no, no, I'm hiding. I'm hiding. So you guys could only hear the mystical voice coming. Now you can oh, see me, but through the magic of television, they cannot see me. Oh, and they yes. couldn't see Jake either. And he said that you could in. see all of us. Well, no, well, you guys, yes, yes. For all those of you watching well, right now. Let's put them on the screen. No, no, let's not put me on the screen. Let's put you guys on the screen. <laughs> so when we introduced Blake, was he seen already? Yes, yes, you guys were all on. Yes, you guys were, oh, but not okay. me. I'm, I'm just a guy back here. Okay, well, that that little handsome voice is one of our producers for Super Chat. Um, his name is Alexis Cardoza, and he's just wonderful, and he's been very, very helpful with everything. Should we dive into the question? Let's dive. Let's dive. Let's go deep. Yeah. Deep. Let's get get yeah, let's to business. Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. Oh. Super Chat. Raise them up high. Oh. Okay. Oh, the first one, should we do Kenny's question first? Yes, well, don't we? So Kenny is one of our platinum members for, for Power and Playback. And he wanted to know what, um, why did, how did you get into MMA? What made you well, want to do that? I've, I've been doing martial arts my whole life. Uh, since I was five years old in a dojo. Uh, my lineage is Tong Sudo, So it goes back to like Chuck Norris. Um, actually, that is one of my instructors, instructors that got his black belt. I started karate when I was real young. I was a point fighter when I was on Power Rangers doing tournaments. And then I turned into a continuous fighter when I got a little older where it's like two, three minute rounds, but you accumulate points. There's no stopping and it's all out like full contact fighting. Um, and then, you know, once this fight started, I was like, okay, I'm training at um, Chatsworth Karate where I got my fourth degree black belt last year. I made a promise to my kid. I said, hey, you know what? Anything that I'm going to do, you're going to do with me. And if you're going to get your black belt, I want to get another rank in mine. So I got my fourth degree. And then once we really started focusing on the, um, once we started focusing on the fight, I transitioned over to GTA, which is my good friend, Rob Gooch. He's a professional fighter. He's 19 and three or something in the, in the world. He's wow. Not like four. And he has, a, he has a system put in place for fighters. It's called the Fight Camp. And that's what I knew I needed. Um, and point fighting is completely different than MMA. Um, continuous fighting is completely different than MMA. It's full on. It's, it's hard hitting. It's full on sparring. We're going 75% in the gym and you better bite down on your mouthpiece or you're going to get knocked out. So I, I fell in love with the process. I started losing weight and I was like, man, this is great. This is what's going to get me ready for this fight. And one thing led to another. And now that's our family over there. GTA, Good Training Academy is family. We love them to death. Um, I got Jackson over there doing jujitsu and MMA. Uh, Olivia will start as soon as she's five years old. <laughs> she's already started. <laughs> I know. She goes, it's funny. She goes to the gym and she'll see her messing around with all the other kids. And she's like, tap me out. Tap <laughs> me out. <laughs> she's so cute. <laughs> Olivia, you want to say hi? Yes, <laughs> Olivia. Hi, baby hi. girl. You she got so big. She's huge so now. We saw her when she was tiny, tiny, like six months old. And how old is she now? She just turned three. Yeah, crazy. Yeah, so so, and then, like I was saying, my fiance, Katie, she's now taking classes over there. She's doing boxing and Muay Thai. It's, you know what it is? It's a great cardio workout. That's what's really, mm -hmm. not only am I doing private lessons, but I'm in a class setting also. I'm yeah. structuring my workouts based around not only privates and jujitsu, but being in that classroom environment to help with, you know, accuracy, target practice, uh, conditioning, all that good stuff that you need when you, when you want to go five minutes in an octagon. Yeah. Normal pro means three, five minute rounds. It's not amateurs normally go two, three minute rounds. So it's a little wow. different. So yeah, I'm going to be going the first rounds, five minutes nonstop. Yeah. So you need that cardio. <laughs> you need that cardio, Blakey. Yeah. And I, so do, proud of I you. do a lot of cardio. I mean, I'm running four or five miles every morning. My cardio is really good. Wow. So, and then I'm taking classes at nighttime. So I work out three, sometimes four times a day. Wow. wow. God bless you. Yeah. So, yes, right? it is. I mean, between you and Kat and the working out, I'm just like, 
Because she'll be like, I just ran three miles today. I'm like, I just walked down the stairs. I know. I I tag him because I'm like, he says this has this line. He says, if you ain't dripping, you ain't working. So, or no excuses. So I always like hashtag him. And then I show my face red and sweaty. Wet and dirty (laughs) workout. You're not dripping that sweat. Yes. Working hard enough. You got to push your, they call it in the MMA world. It's called, you know, like in your car where you hit the red limit meter. Yes. If you can't go past that meter on a daily, you're not working hard enough. You got to be able to push past that red limit. And then once you're past that red limit, everything else will be easy. Okay. Well, <laughs> my, fitness, <laughs> my fitness tells me as soon as I hit that 10,000 steps, I'm good. So <laughs> I'm good if I'm not dripping or not. 10,000, that's it? It. Oh, during the weekend though, this past weekend at Ranger Stop and Pop, I had twenty thousand steps. There yeah. you go. Twenty thousand. Ste- I still wasn't dripping. Twenty thousand. Twenty thousand. <laughs> like I, I busted a move on the dance floor at Ranger Stop and Pop. You yes. should see me. Yeah. I, was- I think I remember seeing it a couple years ago. <laughs> Both of you guys. <laughs> Yes. Oh my gosh, that's right. And he was trying to say we were drunk. <laughs> he was saying we were drunk and we were like, no, we're just happy. We're dancing. He's like, sure. Maybe Cat would, <laughs> would not. Huh? Maybe I was the drunk one. <laughs> we sure. had a, We definitely had a good time. Um, guys, I'm going to be dipping out in just one minute and I will be back. But um, let's ask our second question. Yes. Yes. All right. Super chat before you go. Super chat. Raise my pot. Blake's going to have to help me with the super chat. Okay. Where is our up to? um, The first one is here. Samit Singh. Hi, Blake. How was it like shooting the turbo finale? In my opinion, it's one of the best finales in PR history. Lots of love from Malaysia. Woo! Uh, that's awesome um you know as a kid as as a kid growing up watching mighty morphin and working with everybody in power rangers and then having to depart everybody in power rangers it was not easy for me as a 13 year old it was very heartbreaking it was very sad i didn't want to leave but i i honestly could say it was one of the best parts of of the show transferring and passing the torch onto the new crew um it was fun i had a blast i wish i could have went into space with everybody honestly everybody else got more than two seasons of power rangers and blake just got one wait you stayed though because we passed the torch and you stayed for several more episodes it was still turbo yeah that was yeah okay it was still yeah we cried i think she's talking about at the end when we all when they all went into space yes Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. That was sad. I wanted to go to space. Oh. I could have been a different color. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Right? <laughs> okay. I'll be back. She'll, she'll, be, she'll be back. I'll, we'll keep asking our questions. Okay. The next question is from Ty Sue. Super chat. Raise my pie. Oh, this is awkward. Thank you, Blake. Thank you. <laughs> Um, hi, Nikia, Kat, and Blake. What is your favorite episode or moment on Power Rangers? I think before we filmed the movie, my favorite part was sitting in that table read. And as a 12 year old kid uh, that grew up on Mighty Morphin, just watching you guys all walk in was the most surreal thing for me because I had done other acting stuff with other people and I had done other movies and stuff like that. But something that you enjoy watching and you're like getting out to school to go watch, like Power Rangers was my favorite because of the martial arts and everything. Um, I think watching you guys all walk in and getting ready to do that table read was my favorite part of the whole thing. And obviously filming Turbo the movie, um, we got to do a, a lot of fun stuff on on Turbo. Um, yeah. The episodes were cool, but it was more or less, uh, okay, you're going to work, you're in a soundstage, you're doing the same thing every single day. On the movie, we were on location a lot. We got to film on the Ghost Galleon out in the middle of the ocean, taking that little boat to the bigger boat. So those those were more pivotal points for me on Power Rangers, and I, I mean, I'm 36 now. I cherish those moments, and now my son's eight, and we're we, he's like watching it back, and I'm just like, wow, look at crazy, that hair. look at that <laughs> hair I had. <laughs> and now he I was so cute. Hair. <laughs> so cute, such a cute kid. I remember the first time I met you, you were filming the movie with Shuki. What was the animal movie you were shooting? A rusty a dog's tail. 
Yeah, Rusty, a dog's tail, and Shuki introduced me to you, and that was before we knew you were coming on the show. You're such yeah. a cute, such a cute kid, so sweet and polite, and you're raising your kids the same way. It's awesome. Well, thank you very much. Okay, next question is from Buffalo Dika. Oh no, Buffalo Tika, Ika, <laughs> Buffalo Tika. I think that's how you say it. Okay. Super chat, raise them up high. Super chat. <laughs> Super chat. Um, excluding the teams you were on, which ones would did would you have wanted to be a part of? Oh, hands down, Mighty Morphin. Hands yeah. Hands down, Mighty Morphin. And then also, um, Zio was cool. I liked Austin's costume in Zio. The black and gold yeah. was super cool. That was um, a cool costume. And then I think if there was any other ones outside of that, it would have probably just been the Mighty Morphin uh, Ninjetti. That was so cool to me. The ninja suits. The ninja yeah. Boots. Oh, that was my favorite thing because obviously as a kid too, I wanted to be a ninja. There were so many other things that you could portray as not just a Power Ranger, but then boom, they've come out with the Ninjetti suits. Yeah, oh, I know. So cool. I wish I wish we had done more in the Ninjetti suits because when I came on, that's what our, we, I, we actually did the ninja, ninja powers a lot when once I came on the show, but it was only for like 10 episodes or something like that. So I wish we'd had more time to do the ninja stuff because it was, that was pretty fun. That um, and it was probably way more comfortable than the spandex. Way more comfortable. It's like pajamas. Oh, no, <laughs> yeah. For me, my favorite, uh, like other than the ones I was on, I really loved um, Time Force. But for me, that I love the storyline of Time Force. I love, they actually had some really amazing stories and acting to do. So I really I loved that. Of, honestly, after, after uh, Space, I think I kind of dwindled out of it. I stopped watching it. Threw out of it. it. Yeah. 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 All right, next one is from Matthias Rodriguez. Super chat, raise them up high. Hey Blake, Justin inspired me to take my driver's license. <laughs> Greetings from Morphin Poster Gem Group in Brazil. Shift into turbo. <coughs> Brazil. Brazil. <laughs> Good job, we still got it, Blake. We've still got it. Heck yeah, we'll never <laughs> lose that. We'll never lose that. No. It's it's ingrained. Remember when we, someone asked us to morph at the convention, and we yeah, had and we did it like in sync a couple years ago. And we did it perfectly in sync. We did. I was proud of us. We remembered it. Um, next question is from Ben Hamilton. Super chat. Raise them up high. What's up, Blake? Um, Want to congratulate you on being the first Kid Ranger to live the dream. By the way, how does it feel to square off again against Lil Rocky? Props. <laughs> Again, this will be our first square off, but uh, honestly, it feels good. I'm ready. I'm ready for the world to see what I'm working with. I'm ready to showcase my skills and it's my time to shine. And I just stay focused and I'm trying to stay determined. And um, yeah, I'm just ready. To, I'm ready for this day to come. So everybody can tune in. The pay-per-view is live. We'll have the pay-per-view for everybody that's not able to be there in person. And Yes, and Blake has that posted on his page in the link. You can, right? You have that in your link yep, in your it's all in my bio. I post about it. It's on almost yeah. every single post. So you guys yep. can definitely find the pay per view. The yes. link is not, uh, it's not hard to find. Um, and can and they buy, can, can they buy the merch that you're wearing? Like the Hitman stuff and yeah, the Hitman, uh, the Team Foster, all that stuff's all in my bio. Link is in my bio for all that stuff. So, guys, if you support his, you know, his merch, that actually helps go towards his fight and his training and helps pay for all that. So all fight camp related. Yes. Yeah, so please support it. All, it all helps. It's very expensive. He's literally doing it like a full-time job right now. So um, I actually have a question. So you said you still got about five pounds to drop. So what, what do you, what's your, like, what do you have to do to do that? Cause obviously you still have to eat to keep up yeah, with it's, the calories. It's very and stuff. Simple. So my diet is still low carb. Um, right. Still eat sweet potatoes and I still have oatmeal for breakfast and things like that. Yeah. Um, so the, the last five pounds is basically your body just retains water. When you drink a gallon of water, like I do on a daily basis, that actually puts eight pounds on you when you drink so much wow. water. A gallon is the equivalent to eight pounds. So come fight day or fight week, what I'll do is I'll start on the Sunday before my fight and I'll start drinking distilled water. And I'll drink two gallons on day one. And then I will drink two, a gallon on day two, a half a gallon on day three, three quarters of a gallon on day four, and then a cup of water before my weigh-in. And what it does is your body, when it's distilled, 
it doesn't absorb the same way it does with normal water. It basically just runs through you. So it'll suck wow. up water weight out of your body. Wow. So I'll probably, I'll probably be weighing in around 200 even, actually. I'm probably going to lose 10 pounds. And then once I eat, I'll probably go back up to like 208, 209. I'll probably be fighting at like 210. Okay. Question, because I came in on the, the water. So I want to know, <laughs> before I step on the scale, <laughs> uh, what kind of water not to drink and what kind of water to drink? Because I did notice that I would jump inside the shower one time and I came out and that was a pound heavier. I was like, shower. no, in the shower. What? Yes, because the, the water absorbed. Our body is made up of like, I think it's like 50% water. Yes. So you're a lot of water in your body. So no matter if you work out and you're sweating and then you're drinking, you're still kind of balancing that water ratio. So the best kind of water to drink is alkaline water. Um, mm -hmm. That's honestly the best water. And that's what I drink. I have a water filter system here. Not Beef alkaline. Is Not alkaline. Okay, just <laughs> pretend it says alkaline. <laughs> smart, <laughs> smart water. Any water's good. Any water's good. Smart water's good. It's all the same stuff. It's all good water. But um, if you want the best pH levels, alkaline um, is really good. And then, um, yeah, distilled water is only good for like people that do bodybuilding or they have to cut weight for a show, stuff like that, because your body I won't retain that, that water. It'll just <laughs> go right through you. It's good water minerals that are going into your body, but it's just going to cut all that out of your body at the same time. So you won't retain any of it. <laughs> If that makes sense. distilled water all the time she's gonna drink distilled water now daily <laughs> no because that's not good because honestly your body won't have enough water and you'll be dehydrated yes that's okay yeah. that's okay she'll be like all wrinkled <laughs> like just the skin yeah. hanging we, like... run. <laughs> we don't drink distilled yeah. water we just run <laughs> oh gosh this one Oh. All right, on to the next question. Okay, you got quite a bit of questions here. Red Buick, which is Nate. He's one of our plat, uh, gold models. It should be Blue Buick, but go ahead. A blue, <laughs> yes. Well, we'll ignore oh. the red part. Yes. Okay. Super Chad, raising my pie. You can read this one if you'd like to. Okay, well, I, yes. Okay. Blake, <laughs> I've seen Mike fight. I've seen you training. It will be a great fight. Pull that big upset. Oh, look, yes. You know, I've got that a couple times. I've got that a lot, actually, and it will be an upset, guys. I'm very confident in my training. I'm very confident in my skills and my martial arts. So I'm just going to let that speak volumes. Everybody's yeah. mind will be changed after the fight. It's good. And you have to go in, in with that kind of confidence and strength because, yeah. Don't want to be having any of those thoughts in your head. I mean, honestly, you know, back back in the days, you know, when I was doing my continuous fighting, like when I was 16 and stuff, we didn't have social media. We didn't have cameras and stuff. My mom has videotapes of it. I could probably pull, but it would just take too long. So I've been doing this. This is what's natural to me. I've been fighting. Um, it, this is not something that's not unnormal for me. I'm not nervous at all. I'm actually really excited. Um, so it's, it's not a, it's not a fear factor for me. Um, I'm just going to do what I do and I know what I do. And I think Mike knows what I do because, you know, when we first started talking about this, there was a lot of compliments being thrown out. Now, you know, it's all, it's all hype for the fight. It's all talk for the fight. We can talk as much trash as we want, but come fight day, you better have a really good mouthpiece. Um, because I'm coming in with the heat. I'm coming in with the turbo power. I'm turbo yes. Turbocharge. So, so I have a question, darling. There was once upon a time, and I don't know if you guys talked about this when I was out of the room, where you and, and Mikey were like going at it. Like it yeah. was like nervous energy happening and people yes. were, were actually asking me, are they for real? And I was like texting you, are you for real? Wait, are you guys not friends? Like what's going on? Do, do you want to talk a little bit about that? Was that real? Yeah, you know, we have a lot of smack talk that we could talk about each other. He claims that he was the last Power Ranger. I claim that he was a day player. You know, um, I, 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 I just, I don't know. For me in the Ranger community, you had to morph some type to be a Ranger. And I don't think he ever morphed. So my point is still valid. I will still stick to my guns on it. Um, and we can go back and forth on it. But at the end of the day, we're, we have no bad blood until we get into that cage. Once that cage door closes, there's bad blood. And it's, there's going to be a winner and there's going to be a loser. Um, and then after that, after I beat him up, I told him, I'll, I'll buy him a drink. I'll buy him a shot. We have no hatred toward each other. 
But um, at the end of the day, this is fight. This is a fight game, and this is a real fight. This is not no Jake Paul. This is no Logan Paul. This is none of that exhibition stuff. Um, it's pro, so elbows, knees, all that is legit. Someone's going to get busted open. And then afterwards, we'll still be friends. And if he wants a rematch when I have the belt, we'll, we'll talk about it then. <laughs> so do you think this is something, because you said that you want to continue. So you actually, you want to make this into a career then? You want this um, to be I don't know if I'm going to make it into a career. However, it is something that I enjoy doing. And I've, I've fallen in love with this process. And my coach sees the value that I display. So he's not going to let me just take this one fight. There will be another fight. I don't know who it will be. But at the end, I do have a hit list. Of, like I said, I have people that I do want to fight. And I will. Can you tell them. us? Um, I will hold that till fight night. People will have to tune in for fight night. And I'll make that in the ring announcement that night. Um, but yeah, this is something that I've just enjoyed the process doing. And, um, the gym that I'm with is a very strong MMA gym and they have a lot of fighters. Uh, two weeks ago, I was up in Fresno, California, three of my training partners that I spar with religiously, they were fighting and I was in their corner and I got to experience that hands-on um, the, the hitting and the, and, and the crunching of the gloves on the face. And I really enjoy it. I know it might sound do you? Do you? what? But it's something that I really enjoy doing. And it's just because I'm a martial artist, I feel like. So, yeah, there won't be there, – there will be another fight. I have to get clearance from the wifey first because this is taking a toll not on just me but on her as well. It's a lot. I'm in the gym day and night. And she's doing a lot with the kids. Yeah. So um, I am going to take a break for a second. I am going to yeah. take a break. But I will not gain weight. I will stay – I really enjoy where I'm at comfortably with my weight. And um, – so I'll just stay where I'm at. And who knows, if I do take another fight, I might go up and wait a little bit because I still move really well at that weight. So maybe I'll go up to heavyweight. This is a lightweight fight. I'm at 20, I'll be at 205. Um, I don't think I'll ever go below 200. I'll look too skinny. Um, so yeah, I've just there's, there's, um, there's paths in life that we take and you never know. And I was talking to my buddy about it and he was like, you know, you're 36, man. That's kind of late to be hopping in the octagon. Um, but it's not, you know, it's not something that I'm looking at in that sense. I'm looking at it like I've been doing this for so long. I know what I'm capable of and I know what I have to do. You know, it's like someone's going to take my kids from me. They're, no one's ever going to do that. So I'm a dad and I'm a father figure and I want to put the best show on for them. I want my son to know that you can do anything that you put your mind to and anything is achievable. So that's where we're at and that's what I'm going to do. Um. Is there a way you could put like something over your face to just protect the beauty? <laughs> you know, you, you like come out of this. Bumps. You come out of this with bumps and bruises. I've gotten them. I've gotten bloody noses oh. and black eyes and stuff. Cauliflower like that. ears. Uh, cauliflower ears is something that just comes with a lot of jujitsu. Uh, yeah. Some people get it. Some people don't. But I think it's pretty cool. I think it's badass if you have a cauliflower ear. Just really. I, I rub my coaches all the time. I'll walk by him in the gym and I'll grab his ear and it feels really weird. Um, Jackson's told me multiple times that he wants a cauliflower ear. Now, Jackson, yeah, I don't think it would be cute for a kid to have it, but Jackson's, Jackson's more prone to getting that than me because Jackson's literally doing jujitsu every single day and right. he's doing competitions. Now, one thing that I do want to do after this fight is I want to compete in jujitsu tournaments more. I want to be able to get out there and compete and uh, prove that my jujitsu is legit and get gold medals and stuff like that. So that's one thing that I am looking forward to doing and also getting my black belt in jujitsu. I want to have another black belt in a different style of martial arts. So it's just a process and it takes quite some time. Jujitsu is different. There's not that many belts. So the, it's not like you test for a belt. They give it to you when they think that you're ready. So it goes white belt, blue belt, purple belt, brown belt, black belt. There's only five belts. And along those, there's a stripe system. So you have to get four stripes in order to get promoted to the next belt. And you get that as you go along with jiu-jitsu. So, right. Yeah, I'm just, I, 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 honestly, I enjoy this process and it's fun for me. It yeah. is a full-time job for me at this point right now. I, I really commend you for your discipline because Thank that you. is not easy. You know, when we were talking earlier before we went on air, you were talking about the things that you have given up. Right. Or despite. Not everybody yeah. could do that. Because yeah. I'd be like, I want just a cheeseburger and some potatoes. Can yeah. I just have some? You like, never, right now, fail. I right. would fail. My post-fight meal is going to be probably a large, deep-dish Chicago-style pizza 
chips, some chicken wings, a Caesar <laughs> salad, some sushi, a couple beers. Like it's yes. going to go on and on. And I'm going to fill carb myself up. A oh, carb up. up. Now, let me just tell you about Nakia. So Nakia will say, Kat, I'm, I need, like, I'm serious. I need to get a can of get right. I got to get myself together. I'm like, okay. And she's like, I need you to, to keep me on track. I'm like, okay. So we go to a convention and, and we're at the airport. And I, she says, I'll have a bacon cheeseburger with fries. And I'm like, Nakia, no, you can't have that. And you're like, no. shut up. I'll have a bacon <laughs> cheeseburger. Sounds delicious. <laughs> and, you know, and you know, and you know who will eat my fries? <laughs> Me. Yes. Yay. It's good to indulge these in in certain moments, but when you're focused and you you say, for example, you had an audition for a big motion picture film, you wouldn't be eating the bacon cheeseburger if you wanted to. Oh, do it yeah. it's true. And she you did know, that. Yeah, you did that. You gotta for hold the, accountable the film. sometimes. Yeah. 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 You know, when but you're but motivated after this fight, I'm posting all the good food. <laughs> <laughs> I agree, but you're you're you made a, a very good point. When you um when you have something to look forward to or you have a, 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 goal. a goal, then yeah. you you discipline yourself. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's you, not you, even so much a goal. The reward on the other end is so much more greater to me than the goal. Yeah. The reward that I'm gonna come out with putting on a show in front of thousands, the, the, the venue holds three thousand people. Uh the pay-per-view sales are through the roof right now. It's only gonna continue to get bigger as we get closer. So the reward for me, having that belt, the Ranger, the rumble of the Rangers, the world's toughest Ranger belt, that's what I value more than anything. And like I said in my episode, Shifted, actually, I'm dropping a new episode of Shifted today also, by the way, that everybody can stay tuned for. It has Tell them how to find that. What, what, where do you um, find it? It'll be on my Instagram. I'll put it on my Instagram. Okay. Before we were doing Patreon, we were doing like $5 to see it. Nobody was signing up. Nobody wanted the support. So now I'm just giving it away for free and I'm paying for the episodes myself and doing everything on my own, um, filming it, editing it, and I have help from people and I'm, I'm, it's costing me my own funds. But at the end of the day, it's stuff that I'll look back 20 years from now and be like, dang, look what I did. It's look a journal. It's a video called. journal. Yeah, it's a definitely a media journal and I look forward to that too. So yeah, the reward for me is better than a goal. Because a goal, anybody can accomplish a goal. But if you look at the reward, like when people want to lose weight, say if you're really heavy and you want to lose 80, 90, 100 pounds, the goal is, yeah, I got to diet, I got to exercise. But the reward when you get your body healthy is so much better. You're going to live longer. You're going to feel better. You're going to breathe better. Because I know for a fact, when I was a little on the heavier side, I was getting heartburn all the time. And the reason why you get heartburn is just because you're eating the wrong foods. Right. So reward is better than goal. Obviously you have to have a goal, but I just feel that the reward at the end of the day for me is so much more valuable. Yeah, 100%, 100%. We have more Another question. Yeah, yeah, yes. Go. Jorel. Jorel. Jorel, one of our channel members. One of our channel members. Yeah, yes, yeah, yes. Right. Super, super chat, raise them up high. Yeah, I'm gonna do super oh. chat like this. Super <laughs> chat, raise them up high. We would not win in an <laughs> MMA fight. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Kat and Nakia. Blake, congrats on your health physically and mentally. When did you decide to change your beautiful, iconic hairstyle from Turbo? <laughs> when did I decide? More like, when did I have a choice? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was just, um, it's just something that happens, I guess, men suffer with, you know? Balding is a huge thing, and I've embraced it, and I just shave my head now. It's a lot easier. I do it myself. I don't have to pay for a barber. I wasn't about to be the 36-year-old with the comb over, with the bald spot. No. I wasn't about to be that guy. So I was like, you know what? Screw it. It's gone. <laughs> and it's not bad. I enjoy it. It's really good. It's easy. It's I get up every day. I have a nice bronze shaver, shave the head. I wear a hat a lot of times anyway, so it's, it doesn't really bother me, but it's weird because I had such beautiful hair as a kid. And and honestly, Blake, good hair. Blake, honestly, like, wasn't that like the 90s thing is to have that same cut that you had, like Thomas Taylor or whatever his name was from Home Improvement had it. <laughs> yeah, like, Jonathan all, Taylor Thomas. there we go. I yeah. Started that yes, haircut. there it Justin is. Bieber, Jonathan Taylor Thomas. These guys can all thank me because I started that haircut. You sure did. <laughs> Actually, my mom did. She was smart. My mom started that haircut. So I give it up to my mom. for that. My haircut. dad, my dad went bald when he was 22 years old. And he used to say to me, well, grass doesn't grow on a busy street. <laughs> you know, 
I look at it like, you know, women go through things that men don't go through, having a baby, monthly visits, things like that of that nature. Men suffer from balding. That's one thing that men suffer from. And it's not that bad. So <laughs> another one I can share with you that he used to say is God is good. God is fair. To some he gave brains, to others hair. <laughs> I look at Jackson's hair and I'm like, when he goes and gets his fresh hair, kind of like, so jealous. <laughs> Aww, you look great though. Yeah, you, you, great you can pull it off. You so. pull it off really well. I mean, you're yeah. lucky. Women can't be bald. We would look. My mom said that I have a great shaped head. So you do. You do. There are some that don't, and they they're bald. I so. had an egg head. Oh my god. Not a good look. Or you yeah. have like people that have moles. Hair transplant does not work. I've seen multiple friends do it. It doesn't work. Right. So yeah. really? I'm not going to wear a toupee. That's for sure. No, please. <laughs> I, Although, I, wait a second. How I, funny would this be? How funny would this be if when I weigh in for the fight, if I had a Justin wig on? <laughs> yes. <laughs> do it. Don't. Oh, please. Good do friend. it. I'm good, friend. I'm good friends with Sean Schimmel, we Dragon Ball Z voice actor. Yeah. And he messaged me this yesterday. He's like, dude, I was thinking about it for your fight. You should totally wear a Justin wig on weigh-ins. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And yeah, then you just rip it off and throw it. Keep a straight face. I wouldn't be able to keep a straight face. <laughs> That's awesome. That would be hilarious. <laughs> who's, who's, walking, who's walking into the ring with you? Uh, the Utah Athletic Commission's uh, very strict. So I'm only allowed to have four cor uh, three corners in my corner. So it's my coaches. Three of my okay. coaches. Okay. Yeah, okay. Unfortunately. So if you could have had, had more, who would you have had? Maybe I could have had a couple Power Rangers walk me in, but Utah has their, their commission out there is very strict. So okay. Okay. I have to ask as a mom, because as we were talking earlier, some people, some of our channel members know um, that my son was in MMA. And when he told me that he wanted to fight MMA, I was like, oh, no, you don't, please. no, you don't, please, Jesus, no. And I prayed against it. I kept praying and praying and praying until he no longer is a part of it, but he had a fight. And I went to his first fight and I stood on the side and it was an amateur fight, thank God. So they had all of the, you know, the wear on. And so they really couldn't get completely seriously hurt, injured. seriously injured. But I know just in that first fight, hearing other people, uh, go against my son, oh. like hit him in the head. Oh. And I'm like, what? Right, what? You know, I'm like, I will cut you. <laughs> Talking about it. I was like, hold it in, hold it in, hold it in. So I, my, my question is, I know your parents. We've known your parents since you were a child. Yeah. How do your parents feel about this? Oh, they're stoked. They're excited. They're ready. They, they, they know what they know. What they've instilled in me their whole life. They've seen me grow up doing this, so they know what's going to happen. They're very excited. However, they won't be there because my dad has COPD and the whole COVID thing. So trying to keep it as safe as possible. And the air out there is super thin. I think the elevation's higher, so I have to get out there a week early um, to get adjusted to the altitude. But they'll be watching through pay per view here at home, and they'll they'll be the first one I Facetime after the fight. So. And is all your family going with you the week before? Or are they going to fly in just for the weekend? Yeah, you know, I have a huge support system coming with me. A lot of my friends have rented Sprinter vans and they're driving up. Katie's Aww. whole family's flying out. I got my whole family going with me. Um, so yeah, it's 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 a big pivotal point for me, like I said. And I'm just ready to show everybody, and I'm excited at the same time. And you know, the Coney brothers. Often, yeah. The Coney brothers um, were were t uh, messaging both of us and like, they are so proud of you. It's so cute. They're just yeah. like, and my boy, my boy. Better, and it's, better. And it's uh, honestly, it's a good feeling. So. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. All right. Next question is from what, another one of our, no, we're, we're at Ben, sorry. Okay, never mind. We're at Ben <laughs> Hamilton once again. Super chat, raise them up high. <laughs> Um, ben says, by the way, I felt bad for you in Casper Meets Wendy. Your character totally had a major Gaston compl complex. You know what I'm saying? Do you know what he's saying, Blake? I don't know what he's saying, but uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sounds good. Okay, good. <laughs> Next question. Chonzo Tambuzi, one of our channel members, Gold. Super chat, raise him up high. Welcome back. I've been watching your page and the training has been truly phenomenal and inspiring, bro. 
I have to say that better now. <clears throat> Welcome back. Oh. I've been watching your page and the training. <laughs> Whoa, has been truly phenomenal <laughs> and inspiring, bro. <laughs> oh, thank you. Well, stay tuned because I'm going to drop episode. I think it's six of Shifted, and this is the best episode I've dropped yet. So you guys will see me sparring. You'll see me doing ground game. You'll see full-on 75% fighting. It's going to be an episode you don't want to miss. So stay tuned to my Instagram, and you guys will see a really good video here shortly. He has more to say. Oh, yes. Inspiring, bro. You have already won Blue Crew Hustle Matters. Aw, Chanzo. <laughs> Let me see that shirt. I, I, I didn't see the lightning bolt before. That's cool. Nice. That's very cool. It has all my sponsors for the fight on the back. Nice. These, you guys want to see my, these are my fight shorts. They're little, they're little, okay? <laughs> little. The syndicate. the syndicate. Oh, and they're blue. I love it. Hair and construction. And then I got my meal prep company, Urban Crunch Meal yeah. Prep. And then I got my com my friend's company by my doors, and obviously Hustle Matters Hustle sponsored Matters. me. Nice. Uh, name on the front of the shorts, the Hitman. I like that. That so, how did you come up with that name, Hitman? Um, okay, so there's a story behind that. When I was doing point fighting as a kid, that that was my name, Blake the Hitman Foster. Um, and then when I transitioned into continuous fighting, I just channeled that name. So I only thought it was right that I my instructor actually messaged me, and he was like, "You got to come out as Blake the Hitman." And it makes sense. Like, he was like, dude, and he was messing around with me because, you know, there's a movie called The Hitman and I'm bald. He was like, you should come out in a tuxedo. And I'm like, no, dude, I'm not doing that. I but, yeah. like that. Yeah, so The Hitman is going to put the pause on Michael Lasky September 18th and you guys will see. Don't, don't, for, don't, don't forget, Hitman. you need to get the, <laughs> the barcode tattoo on the back of your neck, too. Oh, right, yeah. That, oh, that'll yeah. Be official, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, next question is Matthias Rodriguez post morph in the poster gem from Brazil. <laughs> Super chat. Where's my pot? Brazil. You're Brazil. You're like, what's a pot? Morph and morph, morph poster gem. <laughs> okay, go ahead. I just read the last one. That's All right, well, you're mocking me. You want to go read it yourself? <laughs> okay, me and my friend <laughs> have written a new fan fiction adventure by Justin. That creates an ending for his story. We wanted Justin to be back sometime. FTW. What is that? FTW. What's that mean? Yeah, we don't want to say that on air. Oh, okay. Is that a bad word? F, F, F the police. Oh, uh, no, W. Oh, w. for the win. F for the, the win. Witches. For the win. F I, the F the I was like, wait a second. No, for the okay. win. There we go. For the win. Yes, yeah. for the win. Justin's coming back, uh, hopefully sometime soon. I don't know. I mean, I've kind of given up on the hope of Justin returning for Power Rangers. Oh. And Tanya. <laughs> I've given up. <laughs> right now they should have me back. I'd be in the best shape of my life doing the sickest martial arts, but. Yeah, I, I know. I can't, I've tried too many times reaching out and just, I guess that's just not going to happen. So there's no rhyme or well, reason to, I'll have to like do that. my own, like little fan fiction film or something and put it on YouTube, I guess. Yeah, yeah. there you go. Yeah. Take matters. That's how maybe, I feel. Maybe you can message me and we can collaborate somehow in Brazil. Right. There we go. There we I go. just wonder, cause I'm looking at some of the super chats on here and I just wanted to make sure that they were like this one. Did you? Yeah, I read that one. Buffalo. Oh, I yeah, wasn't. You here. were in the other one. Oh, okay. Yeah, don't you worry. I took care of no, business. No, I was just making sure. <laughs> okay, then. <laughs> okay. Okay. Next, last question. It's from Regos the Lightning. Bolt. Blake Foster, you are my favorite Blue Ranger. <laughs> you showed me that even young kids can be heroes. Thank you for the inspiration. Shift in the turbo. Oh. oh, that was sweet. That's, That's cool. very Thank nice. You. I really appreciate that. I'm Aww. glad I can inspire people still, you know. Um, that's one good thing about social media and the platforms that we have is, you know, on a daily, I get new followers and they're like, whoa, that's you? You were the <laughs> little kid? You're bald. <laughs> but no, I really do appreciate it. You know, we have a, a solid fandom and a foundation for Power Rangers and I'm glad whether it's weight loss or whether it's MMA community or martial arts or comic cons or however we can inspire 
I'm glad to be a part of it. So. Ah, awesome. You know, I, I want to say, I want to, I know I said I wanted to commend you earlier because you, you've just, you've grown as a human being, as a man, as our little brother. Um, and, you know, sometimes people hold things that we've said in the past as faults for our present. And I know that I've, I've had to deal with some things in my, my present and past. Um, but I just want to say, and you know, we were talking earlier and you were like, you know, I've apologized for things that I've said in the past and, and all of that stuff. I am very proud of you, of the young man that you've become. And I can say young because I'm your elder. I'll <laughs> always be your elder. She's my elder. Too. Yes, I am. Three days, three days. <laughs> That's it. Um, because you've matured, you've grown, you're, you're um, a father, a husband to be, and you're driven right now. And, and I hate when people... Um, continue to um, down. Pull, pull a person down for mm -hmm. things that they for things that they've done in the yes. past. So yes. I just want to encourage you to keep moving forward. S keep your head up high. Know that you have support system. You have love. You have friends, and you have not that you didn't already know that, <laughs> but I'm telling you again. Okay. Okay. Well, I appreciate that, and I just want to say, you know, um, sometimes you get caught in the heat of the moment, and you say stuff that you would regret later and you look back on it hindsight's always going to be 2020 yeah. um so yeah stuff stuff that i've said prior to where i'm at now in my journey i have apologized and i've moved past it and i've talked with people that have moved past it but i i will say that it's not stuff that you learn it's a lesson that you will hold on to forever because i was reading a book to jackson and it was about jujitsu and going into a tournament and and the kids are afraid to lose but when you lose, you actually learn. So yeah, I might have lost followers or I might have lost people in my life that I've had the wrong words come out of my mouth, but it was a thing that I learned what not to do next time. So yeah, I have grown tremendously. Um, I, I'm, a, I'm a father and I just want the best for my kids these days. So I have to know what's coming out of my mouth. And sometimes anger could take the best of us or words can really hurt people, but at the end of the day, they're just words and hopefully people can look past them. And you know, everyone has to say, I'm sorry, or people have to know that, hey, that was a mistake. So it's something that I learned over the years and I'm a better person now and I love everybody and I just wish everybody would love me the same and I keep it mutual and we keep it moving. <laughs> We are, everybody makes mistakes. We all say things. It's just unfortunate because social media, it's like when, when it's out there and it's, you, we, you know, we all say stupid things sometimes, right. but when it's out there on the internet, you can't take it back. And right. people need to have great, be gracious with each other sometimes and understand like- We need more love in this world, honestly. We need to stop yes. hating on one another. We need to not focus on what the other person's doing. Focus on what you're doing. Set goals for yourself. Accomplish those goals be good and what goes around comes around karma karma will get you one way or another so i've had my fair share of it and i don't want to ever experience it again so i just know that i treat people with respect and i stay humble or you get humble so that's our motto in the gym that i live by religiously it's stay humble or get humbled i'm, I'm not going to be the one that's going to get humbled i'm staying humble because i know that that's just going to take me further in life so yeah absolutely we have one more super chat that came through oh. and the Oh, yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Chris Kolka said, do you <laughs> see yourself as famous? Yeah, I think that, you know, with the way the social media is, I think that we all have a platform that makes us famous in a sense. You know, we were all on television. That makes you famous. Um, and power, not only Power Rangers, we've, I have a lot of fans and followers from Rusty A Dog's Tale or Above Suspicion when I worked with Superman or Casper Meets Wendy. So yeah, in a sense, I do feel I'm famous. Um, and yeah, we, we got blue checks. We're verified. Verified. <laughs> We're verified, unlike yeah. some Power Rangers these days. <laughs> Do you remember with, when we all got verified, how excited we were? Yeah. It oh, was we were so excited. <laughs> we yeah. the blue check. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Blake, thank you so much thank for you, being Blake. on our show. T tell thank everybody you. again when your fight is and where they can find you and yeah, all of that. absolutely, guys. We're 17 days away. Steel Fist Fight Entertainment Fight Night is coming. Blake the Hitman Foster is coming to beat Michael Lasky. 
Um, it's going to be a night you don't want to miss. Link in my bio for the pay-per-view. If you want to attend, if you're in the Salt Lake City area, if you want to drive to Salt Lake and you want to see, uh, there's also seats still available up above. I think all ringside are sold out. Um, but yeah, I'm excited. You can follow me on Blake A. Foster if you want to give me that follow back and show the love to Team Foster. But we're coming home with the victory, guys. Yay. Thank awesome. Thank you, Blake, Thank for you. joining us. Always good seeing you too. And you I too. Know. Oh, you guys aren't doing Mountaineer Comic Con? No. no. Oh. Oh, oh, well, I we just did that's rain. The following weekend after my fight in West Virginia. So if anybody's in the West Virginia area and wants to come and see the belt sitting on my table, come on. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yeah. No, we just finished up Ranger Stop and Pop. Um, I'm still trying to get my energy back from the the, the weekend. It was amazing. It was, a, it was amazing. It really, really was. Yeah. It was. Yeah. They worked so hard and it showed and everybody had an amazing time. We had a huge turnout. Alex was there doing That's the awesome. RSP lounge. Um, but it was it was fun. It was yeah. a lot of fun. I got very emotional seeing everybody, Blake, which what a surprise, right? <laughs> We haven't been able to see each other in so long because of COVID. It only makes sense. I yeah. know. So I got, I got, got like overwhelmed. Time. I'm glad it was a good show. Hopefully, uh, they'll bring me into the next one and I get to see everybody. And yeah, I miss doing Comic Cons. I miss getting out and meeting the fans and stuff like that. So I'm looking you forward were... to relaxing the following weekend. It's literally the weekend after my fight. So I'll be in West Virginia for Mountaineer and I get to see some other Rangers and meet some of the new Rangers and things like that. So looking forward you were at our first show you were at you were in our very first year when we were just getting getting and things that thing going. was packed yes <laughs> well it was like packed. three times as busy this time it yeah. was so wow. packed yeah wow. yeah well, it was amazing so yes well thank you love thank you baby we're gonna say some final words bye <laughs> bye, bye you guys bye. love you guys bye love love you too you. bye off to go get my butt kicked in training <laughs> bye bye hey guys Aww, that was so awesome yes i'm so so sorry to get a chance to to be here for uh melody perkins yes. live we had to go on without the nakia yeah it was, um, it was i missed you a lot i missed Not being here i did tune in because i was typing on the side you know saying hello to everybody but i was filming a movie yeah um, i can't really talk about because it, it was an nda that i had to sign but it was a, a wonderful opportunity i met i met some really extraordinary actors, really well-known actors that played my husband and played my son. So I can't wait until I'm able to share it. But um, we do want to tell you that we are interviewing Michael Lasky this Friday. Yes. And the time has changed. 3 p.m. It was later in the evening, but schedules um, didn't work. So we're going to do it at 3 to 4 on Friday. So please tune in and you get to hear Mike's perspective of the fight and what he's been doing to train. And um, we're excited to hear, hear what he has to say too. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. Blake has been our brother since, you know, we were like nurturers to him when he was on the show. And I've always seen him as a brother through the mm -hmm. good, the bad, the ugly, the, the moments of, you know, despair or whatever. He's always been our brother, yes. no matter what. Yes. Um, and Mike has become a friend of ours um, through, conventions. through conventions. Like we've got to know him as well. Um, I, I wish that it could just be a draw. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, yeah, yeah. I don't want anybody to get their faces. You know, Mike in or... could beat him in a karaoke battle. I, Ooh. he could beat Blake in a karaoke battle because he could take down some karaoke. Do you remember? Yes, I will, will walk, walk a thousand miles. And... Yes, because we did. That's what. That's exactly what popped in my head. We did karaoke at uh, was it Ranger Stop and Pop? Yeah, Ranger, Ranger Stop. Stop. Ranger in Stop in Orlando. Orlando. We went. Uh, that's when I got a chance to to know Mike. Uh, we did karaoke and that's the song that he sang and we were cracking <laughs> up but it was so entertaining and everybody was like yes I will it was funny it was fun it was a lot of fun but so, this Friday three o'clock 3 p.m pacific, pacific standard, standard time. time we will see you then bye guys bye, bye.